We told you a couple days ago that Marquette was going to beat Western Kentucky by 18 points. Probably wouldn't have bet it or not. But when Western Kentucky had a seven-point lead over Marquette at halftime, uh, I think everyone's eyebrows were raised a little bit, including those in the Marquette locker room. That is Carter Elliott of Sleepers Media. I'm Brian Ralph of Heatcheck CBB here on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel. Um, Carter, this game was more fun than we thought it was going to be. The result ended up probably in the place we expected it to. But Western Kentucky made this interesting. Yeah, they definitely made it interesting. And, um, you know, Marquette had kind of got out to a faster, not a fast start, but they they were looking good kind of early on. Tyler Cope was feeling really good. Then the game was like going back and forth. And then I want to say that Western Kentucky went on like a 20 to four or like a 24 something run where they just looked like they were in sync. And Marquette was kind of doing the Marquette I, thing. I, doing the Marquette thing, because when I was watching them, I could kind of see like maybe a little bit of doubt coming to the back of their head. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, here yeah. we go. Like, here we go again. We're, we're doing this thing again. But, you know, credit to them. They they came out that second half a different team, even when it got close in the second half again, because Marquette came out pretty strong. You're like, okay, they're going to pull away. Western Kentucky just kind of kept throwing punches here and there, got it tied again. And then Marquette did the, you know, class thing. They did the I'm better team thing and yeah. ended up winning this game by 18 points. But I don't think that 18 point, uh, you know, margin of victory is reflective of how this, how honestly close this game was. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Marquette, or excuse me, Western Kentucky went on that run. The defense they play when it is going, it's like a tornado. It's absolute mm. chaos. They're just throwing guys at, at ball hand and they're jumping in passing lanes. Marquette's on a team that turns the ball over a lot. They turned over 10 times in this game, and I'm 99% sure all 10 of those came in the first half. It yeah, was, I mean, and, and you would think they wouldn't have those issues with Kolig, but like even right? Kolig was a little bit shaken. I was like, okay, what's right. going on here? Like their pressure got to Marquette. Marquette was throwing a lot of dumb passes, and then they were overpassing. They went through that stretch, the, the end of the first half, where guys didn't want to shoot. Like They'd get into the lane and they'd kick out for three, but the guy was only kind of open, so they'd pass it around some more and then turn it over. It was an avalanche of a run, and with the energy in the building, it really felt like uh, a game-changing swing. Given Marquette's history recently, and given how much they had put into this tournament, um, I did not know if they were going to be able to do what they ended up doing and reset and exert their will in the second half. And they did in a huge way. Cam Jones was the biggest reason for that, in my opinion. He scored just below. He had 28 points in this game, was the guy who took it from being a, a 5 to 10-point Marquette lead to absolutely blowing it out, putting Western Kentucky behind. Tyler Kulak had the double-double. He was, he was great. They obviously needed him. But Cam Jones was the guy, man, in this game that was the difference. Cam Jones, I think, is the player that has me most excited for what Marquette can do because uh, ever since it was like – it was a combination of Colet going down, but also at the same time Cam Jones was disrespected by like Big East voters. I don't think he – I don't think he got voted to any Big East teams, was it? Not one. Didn't get, didn't get an honorable mention, I don't believe. Yeah, they might have – they might have they might have poked the bear a little bit. <laughs> because that's, that's a bad man, for real, and – you know, when they have Kolek playing at this level, Kolek, you know, for all the turnover things we gave him, he had three turnovers in this game, still did the Kolek thing, 11 assists, mm -hmm. six rebounds, 18 points, you know, just, uh, you know, a little light walking a day for him. But if they're able to get this type of performance from Cam Jones, Kolek, then they have Joplin chipping in a double-double with 13 points, 11 rebounds. Also, quiet game offensively, but still eight rebounds, five blocks in this game. Like, this Marquette team has something, you know what? It, 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 to look at like glass half full, I actually am a little bit more impressed that Marquette was able to withstand the scare and bounce back instead of just not having a scare at all. If, if, if we want to do the little glass right. half full thing, they took the scare, took it on the chin. We talked about on the pregame um, that Western Kentucky does try to speed people up and turn them over. So like, yeah, it was, and it it worked. was a tough matchup as a 15, not a tough one, but like, they survived the scare and they end up winning by 18 points. So they, I feel like you got to feel pretty good about Marquette. I do too. And, and that's surprising to me, but the mental toughness they showed, which was mm -hmm. a question with this team because of what has happened in past tournaments was huge for me. They also shot 13 to 36 from three. It was 36%. Not, not great. And a lot of those came late, but the ability to pull away like this and win a game when you were not hitting all of your shots, I think was, was big too. Now, Western Kentucky, 
went into a, a, a shell of themselves offensively as well, or I guess reverted back to who they were in the mm-hmm. second half more than anything else. But I give Marquette a lot of credit for persevering, persevering through this. Um, last thing I'll, I'll ask you before we get out of here, how far do you think Marquette can go? Did this change your opinion of, of what that ceiling is? So coming into this tournament, I've been, I've been kind of standing strong, standing packed on that. Like this is like Shaka kind of getting over the hump year for me. Like mm-hmm. not and not over the hump that he has obviously he's had all types of success, um and you know has been to a Final Four before but it's been a long time and you know you have that taste yeah. of the Abilene Christian thing in your mouth at Texas and then last year you know as a two seed yes they lost to a Michigan State team that was playing really well but like you know they, they didn't really necessarily have the best showing in that game, um so it's not like a redemption story but I just feel good about this Marquette team because if Tyler Cole looks healthy then I feel like you got to believe in this team. Like last year, he had the thumb thing that he hurt in the first game against Vermont. That definitely affected him against Michigan State. If he's healthy, if Cam Jones is playing this way, Oso is one of the most versatile bigs in the country. Stevie Mitchell is just like an indispensable do-it-all guy. Get anything from Joplin and Ben Gold. Like that's a that's a lot of pieces. Then you have the Marquette defensive intensity plus the mm-hmm. extra defender that Shaka is when he's on the court. I, you know, I, I believe in this, in this Marquette team. I don't know where it ends for them. I think I had them going, well, actually I had them losing to Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> Me too. Uh, or, Me yeah, too. So, <laughs> you know, it, it opens up now. Like, you, you know, if you are Marquette, maybe that was one of the reasons they came off slow in this game. If they're looking ahead, it's like, mm-hmm. all right, we get past this next round. We're looking at what NC state or Oakland to go to an yeah. elite eight. Like that's, you know, it's, it's tough not to look at that world, but, yeah, I, I feel good about Marquez's chances. I do too. I do too. And I think this game, this win was also important. We talked about Kentucky. We had said, me and me and Greg Waddell on the Kentucky preview, that Oakland was going to be a really tough test because of the defense they play. It's unlike anything else that Kentucky has seen. If they can get past that, get into playing teams that are more traditional in their style, we had a lot more faith in what Kentucky was going to look like. I think some of that applies to Marquette here too, given Western Kentucky's just chaotic defensive style and, and constant pressure that they throw guys at you. Marquette's ability to get past that and now face a, you know, it'll be a the winner of the Florida Colorado game. We're recording this first half of that game. Whoever wins that game is not going to provide that unique difference about right. playing that game. Obviously Colorado or, or, or Florida, can beat Marquette just based off talent and and playing better, but there is not the added wrinkle you have to be prepared for that is different than preparing for another team. So I I do think there's something said for getting over that hump too, if you're Marquette. Right. They're they're just, I mean, obviously Florida has the guard play golden, you know, they got the talent, but it's not like they're throwing something at them that they haven't like, you know, because some of the, some of the things about March that beats teams is like when you get some stuff thrown at you that you like, you get a junk zone throw at you. You get like a, <laughs> you saw San Diego state today and that one, three, one, like get like sped up and rushed sometimes. Like it's, it, it it's, it's different when you haven't seen it all year. So that's not, that's not something they're going to have to necessarily prepare for. It's just straight yeah. up having to deal with whatever the opponent is and Colorado and Florida bring two different things, but both very good teams. Absolutely. It's one of the things we love about college basketball is that different teams can play different ways, can win games different ways. Uh, so the pass this test from Marquette too was, was certainly big. We want to let you know this recap was brought to you by MyBookie. They're our partner uh, throughout the anti-tournament here on the Supers Media YouTube channel. If you're still on the hunt for a sports book to call home, MyBookie is a place to do it. You click from a huge selection of straight bets, props, and odd boosts, however you want to play. MyBookie makes it easy to do so. You can sign up now. We have a generous welcome offer. Use promo code SLEEPERS when you sign up and you get a first deposit bonus of up to $1,000. So make sure you use promo code sleepers at sign up. Whoever Marquette plays next, whether it's Florida or Colorado, we will have a recap or a preview uh, and a recap. A preview of that came up on the channel. We're previewing and recapping every game of the NSA tournament on the Sleepers Media YouTube channel. So make sure you like and subscribe.